Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Our final of three nibbles of Netflix's live action Avatar The Last Airbender. We have made it to the end. You guys have been the push to our pool, the Momo to our Appa, and we're at our journey's end. For season one. Thank you for all your support. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of made it there without you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this. Lots of feelings, lots of thoughts. We're doing four episodes. We did four episodes the first one, four episodes this time. We're changing it up how we do like our Netflix show reviews. You know, I don't know if we wanted to talk about this for eight weeks. Yes. Guys, would you guys want that? <laughs> but, you know, I have to be honest. I feel like, you know, we've we've we watched it very quickly, but we've been stewing in this much like a sea prune oh yeah sea prunes <laughs> Qatar's favorite it tastes like home <laughs> <laughs> that's the water tribe's camel soup <laughs> <laughs> all right so before we officially get into this episode reviews subscribe patreon send us emails of your thoughts on pop culture things avatar stuff uh, abo nibbles at gmail.com everything's down below so just like scroll down if you're watching this on youtube in the description you guys know the drill but i'm gonna say it anyway because some of you forget <laughs> but hopefully you can be the appa to lift us up to get 200 reviews take us to the stars 200 yeah. of them two times five plus more yeah. like if we're at 200 and you see it just keep going keep going yeah <laughs> all right so <laughs> massive spoiler warning you know we don't want to burn you with spoilers Spoilers for the entire first season of Netflix's and a little, a little bit of the animated show. Yeah. Like season two, just like a little bit. Is it me or is Noah coming in hot with the puns mm, up top? Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm getting people prepped. All right. So let us officially take a bite of Avatar The Last Airbender episodes five through eight. Aang and the gang continue their travels. Aang heads into the spirit world and learns more from his past selves. They finally make it to the Northern Water Tribe, where Katara shows off her bending, Sokka falls for a princess, and Aang battles the Fire Nation and his thoughts on what it means to be the Avatar. Wow. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are doing four episodes. I, it was actually, you know, we didn't watch, we watched four, did the review, waited, Watch for doing this review. And I'm actually kind of glad we did it because these four episodes, uh, pleasantly surprised, but these four episodes, I feel like two of like the first two, five and six are an arc mm. and seven and eight are kind of an arc. So they feel like two, two parters. Yeah. So I was kind of excited about that. But what are your thoughts? What are your general feelings about this? My general feelings are so it's interesting that you pointed out like the sort of two halves of these four episodes that we watched because. I I feel that the second two are stronger than the first two. Like, and I feel like much stronger. Mm. But much like the Avatar, I do think it brings it into balance where as a four-part watch, it was good altogether. But I do think that the this the, those first two, five and six, something about them was a little tough for me to get through. And I don't know if it's because I'm so used to the arc and the way the characters are introduced in the animated series. Yeah, I think that's really hard, right? I we're we love the original, right? And we came into this with open minds. We want we wanted it to be the best it possibly could be. And I think with a lot of people that are fans of it that went into it with open minds, it's hard to separate that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like ooh, I want to. I'm like giving myself over. While a lot of this did work, I feel like especially with the time constraints of eight episodes, twenty to eight. And they had to do a cohesive story. I do think it worked for that story. It was very much like Aang has a mission and he has to get, he has to get there. So that's what we got. My general feelings for it is it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like it's not great. Right. But it's fine. And, and I think that's one of the things that's a little disappointing, right? Is that going into this, we wanted it to be great. So kind of tempering our expectations, I think is part of this and saying, yeah, did I enjoy it while watching it? I did. Right. And I think that's good. So, I mean, I think that's the best thing to do. I, I feel like uh, adaptations always have this like hurdle mm -hmm. to like prove why they have to exist. 
I think it's hard, right? When it's like such a beloved series and then they had like the 2010 one and then also having this. I feel like in the beginning, they already proved that they jumped over that first hurdle of like, we're a better adaptation. I, I'm not really in the camp of like, they have to prove why they exist. As long as it's good and they enjoy what they're doing, I'm here for it because mm-hmm. the original will always exist. Yeah. We can always go back to it. After watching this, I'm not saying, gosh, I hope they don't make a season two. You know, I'm not, I'm not in that camp. Yeah. I'm in the camp of saying, I'm so excited that we got this. And I think that it can only be bigger and better from here. I agree. I agree. Good foundation. Mm-hmm. They can learn. Like any home, there needs to be a strong foundation. <laughs> All right. So these first two episodes, Spirited Away and Masks. Um, I very much like Masks a little more than Spirited Away. Mm-hmm. But the main point of these two episodes is that Aang, Katara, and Sokka go into the spirit world. And Sokka and Katara get taken by Ko, the face stealer. And Aang has to get them out. He has to give something to Ko to get them out. I... I just want to put this out there. I thought it was hilarious that like they get taken, right? And then Aang is like, I'll be back. It felt like 10 days later. <laughs> it's like not a big deal. I feel like obviously it could have been shorter, but like <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm always like, how close are things, right? And the fact that he had to go to some island, right? Yeah. Where Roku's temple is and then get back and then went, you know, so he's all over the place. He got captured and then went back. You know, that co must not have been very hungry because he should have gobbled those kids up real quick. Well, he didn't have like a bunch of villagers to get to. (laughs) So maybe he like lets them ferment and then he like, yeah, right. Like a spider, he wraps them up and then they turn into juices. Speaking of co though, in the spirit world. So we got high by co, a spirit Fox. Um, we got Wan Shi Tong. There's a lot going Mm -hmm. on in the spirit Mm -hmm. world. At first, I was like, why are Sokka and Katara there? Yeah. Like, this is Aang's thing. I was fine with it, learning that they were there for a purpose to develop their characters. Yes. Like, it gave them a reason to be in the episode almost, and also made Ko more terrifying. Yeah. So, we learned that Ko, I've, in the animated series, Ko really is just the face stealer, right? You can't move your face because he'll steal it. Whereas in this, He's, he feeds on despair. So part of it is that you kind of get trapped in a memory uh, where you feel horrible and that's how he gets you. And so in those horrible memories, we learn more about them. And we see, uh, I'm going to say Sokka's first because it's less horrible than Katara's. For us, but for him, it's probably the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. So he, uh, he wakes up in a memory of having passed his ice dodging trials and overhears his father saying to someone like if it wasn't for you helping Sokka he would have never done it he's not the warrior I thought he was going to be um not someone his uncle Batu by the way that's true (laughs) how dare (laughs) he's supposed to get his own episode yeah I have thoughts about that um the episode stuff and we'll talk about it a little later I I thought for Sokka's character it made sense right because he wants to be this leader he wants to be the best he possibly can be for his people and in his dad's eyes and everything so I guess like him finding out that he didn't do something that his dad was proud of him and they lied to him would be kind of, I guess, like self-esteem shattering. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that it's totally valid for Sokka. But when you're watching it side by side compared to Katara's, um, you would think they share a mom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, so, <laughs> so yes, they both lost their mother. Right. Uh, Sokka's dealing with feeling like less than a leader. Katara is dealing with her mother giving up her life for her and being murdered in front of her. Yeah. Tough stuff. Yeah. And that it was good for both of these characters, though. It propelled their characters a little bit and again, gave them like a reason to be in the episode. (laughs) In the flip of that, we have Aang trying to save them, right? And we get to see another avatar. We Mm -hmm. get to see Roku. His characterization was funny to me because he was like that goofy magician, like just playing with him. I think we needed it, right? Because the other avatars we see, Kurok and um, Kyoshi, just like weren't really helpful. (laughs) Yeah, we, I mean, Kyoshi was basically just yelling at him. So we needed someone to be nice to him. Yeah. And so I did appreciate that, right? He kind of does a little trick. He, He makes him tremble a little bit, but he's like, I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Right. 
And and so that interaction was finally good to see someone being nice to Aang. Yeah. What did you think about um, Hai Bai? Hai Bai in meaning the temple? The spirit world? The Oh. Yeah. The Hai Bai. The 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 spirit. Oh. Um <laughs> I thought he was There's terrifying. There's a lot of names, I guess. Yes. Yeah. I thought he was terrifying. And, you know, he didn't turn into a panda, though, which was a little upsetting. No. I wanted him to have that little soft panda moment. Yeah. But I thought he was really scary. He was giving me very dinosaur vibes, mm. you know, with, with the yelling and, and the smoke coming out. Um, but I, I thought that it served its purpose of separating them. Yeah. I liked the... Um you know, so we find out that Yue is the spirit fox that Sokka mm. finds in this one. I actually kind of liked it because it gave her like more of a connection to the spirit world than just being like, I was brought back to life by a spirit and that's it. So I, I like that she's more in tuned with that, right? And she's a priestess um, for the water tribe. So I liked that inclusion. Although the spirit fox looked cool as hell. Yeah, she was great. I, I loved it. it. And it was funny because I obviously didn't put two and two together until we met Yue. But I was like, look at this delightful fox. Yeah. Not everyone in the spirit world is awful. That's nice. Yeah. And I I really appreciated Sokka in this episode. He was like, uh, when he's not in his, you know, terrible memory, he was like peak silly Sokka, like being scared of things, not knowing what was going on. And like, that was really fun for me. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, and I, I liked that he was confronted later on when he actually gets to talk to mortal form Yue. Um, about going into the spirit world. And she's like, yeah, I go in there for, for fun. Don't you? And he's like, no. <laughs> it was a terrifying. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I like that juxtaposition between like, yeah, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you're fine. Just like, don't go to Ko's place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went to the wrong place. Yeah. Also in the spirit world, we see Aang reunite with Gyatsu. Mm. So this is something that's really interesting. We learn that Gyatsu did not go on to the final stage of enlightenment, stage of enlightenment right. to stick around to talk to Aang. And so Aang unfortunately thinks that they have a lot all the time in the world, but B- Gyatso is just there to guide him in this moment. And I actually really liked the inclusion of him. I'm still, you know, did he just stay there until he could finally talk to him and then he passed on because Aang goes back later and he's not there. So, but I liked having Gyatso also be that enlightenment for Aang that wasn't a past avatar, Mm. you know, because later on in the Korra series, there are people in the spirit world that do help her that aren't necessarily past avatars and stuff. So I I like the inclusion of other people that mean something to these characters, helping them along the way. I mean, I guess if you think about it in this particular, you know, version of the last airbender, they're really, they're, they're broadening the spirit world. And what can happen there. And so part of that is meeting someone like Yatsu. Part of that is the fact that, you know, sort of regular mortals can go in like Katara and Sokka. And I guess maybe they'll play around with that a little more. And I think you're right. It is sort of a precursor to Korra and what Korra can do in the spirit world. I think that's one of the funny things about this, right, is because we have Korra is very much heavy with the spirit world and spirits and everything. And a lot of that lore kind of changes. Um, Mm. People enjoy it, agree with it, whatever, it exists. So they also, when they're doing this stuff, they can play with that a little bit. So it might be different than the source material, but in the grander scheme of things, I think it's kind of like soft rules in a way. They can make it up as they go, (laughs) really. You know, you just don't want to stay in there too long. I mean, I guess if uh, they don't change how bending works, we're safe. Mm -hmm. uh co in this loved it i mean it was like a one-to-one how are you gonna mess that up really having short george takei play oh yeah perfect perfect choice no notes 10 out of 10 just 100 percent co yeah (laughs) super scary i mean they even got us with a little bit of a jump scare when he was going after katara so the menacing spirit face stealer co was really at the top of their horror And I liked how they included stuff from the extended lore of the Avatar universe. So he has to go get a relic of Ko's and it's his mother's ancestor, the mother of faces. And that's kind of what Ko's like pissed off about. Mm. And so when he goes to the temple to talk to Roku, Roku tells him, yeah, you might want to like go give that back to him. It's going to be fine. 
Um, so, but I like that they included that from the comics. So it's cool that we're getting these like just a little extended stuff. That's what we like, right? Mm -hmm. About adaptations is that like they have so much to play with. Yeah. And, and I wonder if, if I had read more of the comics, if I would actually get a lot more from the series, maybe than I even think some of the things that I'm questioning, maybe they make more sense because they pulled them from other source material. Right. Right. One of the other things that these two episodes specifically does is kind of flesh out Ozai, Azula, and um, Zuko's backstory. And mm-hmm. Iroh's there as well. <laughs> um, but in this particular episode, it's interesting to see Ozai hit Azula against Zuko in a way. And, you know, when she's trying to do resources and stuff and she thinks it's Zhao that's doing everything, Ozai takes pleasure in telling Azula, you're wrong. It, yeah. it was actually Zuko that was doing this. And it seems like he almost gets like, he likes that she's getting pissed that he's doing something. Yeah. As opposed to in the original series, he very much just always favored Azula over Zuko anyway. Yeah. So in this one, they're really leaning into like really bad daddy a thousand. And again, I think this, this kind of comes back to the conversations that we always have about depth of characters. And so we're basically watching her being psychologically abused by her father which is going to be pushing her and pushing her more and more towards being evil and insanity. Yeah. I, I liked the inclusion of Azula here. You know, in the next episode, we see that he's training her and he puts like his prisoners against him and we see the flash of blue flame a little bit. So we're seeing that change from when in the original series we meet her and she's already at this point. Mm. So we're seeing that. Do you think the inclusion of Azula this early and us kind of sitting with it a little bit and getting her story was worth it. Like, did you enjoy it? I don't, I, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it did really anything for this first season other than introducing her as a character. Right. Whereas at the end of season one of the animated series, she's the cliffhanger right. of introducing this sort of mysterious sister. Whereas now we've gotten to meet her and it really is just building up to her becoming sort of out in the world and conquering things. So as far as the Avatar storyline, I don't think it did much, although it was enjoyable. I liked seeing Mai. I liked seeing Tai Chi. Not Tai Chi, (laughs) Tai Li. Tai Li. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I wish they had a little more to do. I wish we got to see them fight a little bit and train a little bit. They were... Once. (laughs) Right. They were literally, they were just like little... They were just standing there the entire time. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do much. Right. So I think like they could have built them up a little bit. I think my my biggest thing is since we there was no side quests or side missions or things for these, you know, we didn't get the Great Divide. We didn't get the Deserter episode. We didn't get the Haru stuff. So like in those episodes, they're very much like side missions, right? In the mm-hmm. Deserter episode, Aang, I feel like is really important and I'm kind of curious why they took it out. Because that's when he first learns firebending and it has ramifications all the way to the third book, the third season, Um, because he hurts Katara. Katara finds out that she can heal, but that's why he's like, like kind of not with firebending. Like he doesn't really want to do it until he has to. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm sad that we didn't get some of these side missions or whatever, because those are the ones that really grow the characters. Mm -hmm. And my only complaint really the biggest one that I have with this is that because we didn't get those, some of the character development either felt rushed, unearned, or just like not even there. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of this, we're supposed to be like, oh, they all are like a super close family and they went through all this growth. And it's like, well, they did, I guess. So for you, is it just them as a whole, as a unit where you're sort of missing the growth? A little bit. And the camaraderie? And I don't know if that's because... I wanted to see some of those moments, you know, Mm -hmm. like in the great divide, we have Katara and Sokka literally on separate sides and seeing which one is right. And then coming together, we kind of got that with the, the secret tunnel stuff. It was weird for it to be so soon Mm -hmm. in the first place with not Katara and Aang. You know, so it's, I don't want to nitpick it, but like, those are the things that I feel like really what makes us by the end of 20 episodes again it's 20 not eight really attached to these characters yeah Yeah. i do i do want to say something i had obviously for my research watched a bunch of interviews and the great divide is one of the most hated episodes by avatar fans 
uh, because they think it is the most filler episode and does nothing to drive the season forward. And I actually saw the creators and Dante Basco talk about it and they were kind of like, yeah, we kind of get it, but we still think it's a great episode. I, everything I just said, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I mean, there are other episodes that really propel their relationships forward more. Right. And I, I do like that episode because that was one of the first times they played with animation styles. Mm. Um, but I kind of like just the general concept of it, of changing perspectives and maybe it's not actually what you think it is. And then Aang kind of just like making it up to bring peace to everybody. Yeah. So I think it, it is filler. I don't really think filler episodes actually exist, but like there's a point to it. Yeah. Well, it's also funny. <laughs> One of the other things that bothers people is that Ang lied. Yeah, he didn't lie. He lied at the end. They're like, but he's supposed to be just and true. But I think like at the end of the day, if both sides are right or wrong, what does it matter? Just like get along. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I do. It is a weird episode, but I think for their relationship, it yeah. makes sense. Now, I there is a character that gets introduced in episode five, and mm. it is June, played <sighs> by Arden Cho, uh, with what? Is it a star-nosed mole wolf? Something. I, I can't remember the exact name of it, but Nyla, oh, so cool. Yeah. I, you know, she she's introduced and like kind of never comes back again, but it introduced the concept of bounty hunters into mm-hmm. the universe. I always loved her. I think this is, in this entire adaptation, the best one-to-one adaptation of a character. The look, mm-hmm. the attitude, everything perfect we don't get her enough but it was enough for me what about the flirting with uncle iroh i actually liked it (laughs) i did too (laughs) because in the animated series i'm gonna say this 50 million times um iroh is the one that kind of like skeezily is like flirting with her but i like in this one he's like your dad's kind of cute yeah i'm like yes (laughs) yes I loved it i i liked her a lot um maybe we'll see her again she did say something like i'll see you around so maybe in the adaptation I mean, and the interesting thing about June is that she really doesn't have an allegiance. Her allegiance is to whoever's going to pay her money. And so, I don't know, maybe she could appear to help Team Avatar at some point. Yeah, and, you know, she said something like about Benders, and you just go in after the dust is settled and you get what you need. So it's introducing that kind of concept to this, and I I appreciated Mm. it. Going on to Masks and then the finale, right? Masks is actually probably one of my favorite episodes out of all of them um and this is like the second part to the story i liked it because of zuko and ang's conversations Mm. that they have getting to that point i loved how they just kind of recreated zuko being the blue spirit breaking ang out of that prison they even did the ladders just as they did it when i saw that i was like I loved that in that episode. I'm so glad they kept it. You know, and in, in the episode before this, uh, Spirited Away, we really didn't get much action, I would say. There's a lot of running away and being scared. Scary. Whereas in this one, there was tons of action. I mean, Aang and Zuko fighting the fire benders on that bridge is such an awesome scene. Just Aang completely like coming down, whopping them all off with the air. I mean... We needed a scene like that. We hadn't gotten one in a while. Yeah, this is also, this is a really big one. I feel like these two episodes are a huge one for our Fire Nation, our Firebenders, because we finally get to see the Agni Kai between Zuko mm. and Ozai. Um, and I liked some of the changes that they did because, you know, it shows Iroh standing up for Zuko. You know, he, he goes into the, the, the battle room and he's like, let's do this. Well, if you do that, the 41st division is going to be slaughtered and they think it's okay. And Zuko, they're going to sacrifice them being the sweet little baby. He is. He's like, well, we can't sacrifice people that way. Agni Kai. Right. (laughs) But I liked the change they did with it. Right. Because we got to sit with it a little more and we got to see how much it affected Zuko afterwards. And also seeing Iroh kind of stand up for him. It's like, he's your son. What are you, what are you doing? You know, I don't know how, the Fire Nation monarchy works. <laughs> but if Iroh and Ozai are brothers and Iroh is the older brother, why didn't he become the Fire Lord? It's probably just like how Azula could probably go over Zuko if 
the Fire Lord deems it. Mm. Maybe I, um, Ozai was just the nastier one and his father was like, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was like, you're more like me. Also, maybe Iroh didn't want it. True. He doesn't seem like the type of person that would want it. He should have. Well, don't forget. I mean, he was he was a great commander and he did slaughter tons of people, but he's had a since had a change of heart. Right. So it's interesting. I was just thinking about that. But the the thing is, is that in this situation with Zuko and Ozai, Iroh is trying to stop him and Ozai is just like flat out ignoring him. Right. right. And he's like, no, I'm going to try and kill my son. Yeah. I, I think it's. I, I liked how they depicted it, right? The the bending itself, um, amazing. I, I loved this fight a lot. But showing Zuko hesitate to burn his father and then his father immediately turning around after already burning him, decides to go a step further. And so that way he actually has to wear his shame for everybody to see. It's really fucked up. Mm. Real fucked up. And I like how this adaptation is really painting the fire Lord as like a terrible person because we didn't really see him in the animated series. He's very much a man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be afraid of him. And in this one, they're like, Oh no, 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 no. You, you need to be scared of him immediately. Yeah. And I mean, Daniel day Kim is just doing the job. If you have Daniel day Kim, (laughs) you can't hide his face and you also have to give as much screen time as possible to him. Yeah. I mean that (laughs) top knot, goes up to the ceiling yeah. and he's still commanding the room. Yeah. I also like, um, so in these four episodes, specifically these last three, um, some of my favorite characters for the season kind of shifted mm. a little bit. Tell me more. Um, I think towards the end of this, we'll give out our season nibbies. I don't the- like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I told you before. I don't like it. So what I'm calling like our season awards or MVPs, I call them nibbies. That's so disgusting. I don't even know. That's worse than skin cycle. Why? Because it is (laughs) nibbies. Okay. Listener, watcher, let us know what we should call them. I don't want to call them like best bites. Like that sounds kind of weird, right? This is the man who doesn't like when I call our Patreon members ABOPs. And he's calling the awards nibbies. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Zhao really became, at first when I saw him, I was like, mm, that's not Zhao. I'm like, he's, he's a little weird. Love the actor. But I was like, yeah. But he started, I started really leaning into his delivery and his acting. Mm. And I was like, I actually kind of really like this because it seemed like, he was one of the only ones or his character allowed him the opportunity to really be like grandiose with it mm-hmm. and just ridiculous. I mean, Zhao the Conqueror, Zhao the Moonslayer, come yeah. on. I think that the character got better the more the desperation took over. Mm-hmm. And so the more desperate he was to be this leader, to be the admiral, to be respected, it the the character came along more and yeah. was definitely had more of a presence on screen. I loved it. I thought it was ridiculous. You know, when he's telling the, I guess the recorder of history, he's like, you know, not this one, but faithful. And it's like, you're ridiculous. This recorder of history was not very good because apparently he didn't write how many guards were outside the door when there were four <laughs> of them standing there. He didn't write down that the avatar was chained both by his, you know, arms and legs. Yeah. Come on, get on it, guy. He needs to get better. Mm. He just he must be him. a newbie. Yeah. <laughs> just told him. So, um, again, one of the the things that I really liked about this episode was getting this development really well done with Zuko and Aang. You know, after they leave um, the prison and Aang has to kind of take care of Zuko where they're hiding from everybody, there's this interesting conversations that happen and Aang really opens up to him. And this is what Aang is all about, right? He doesn't care that Zuko has been trying to kill him this whole time. He can see that he's not as what he's trying to be, right? He has a mask mm. over his face and he could be better than he is, but he just can't be at the moment. And Aang is trying to like open up to him. And, you know, he tells him your, your dream journal is like the only thing that's helped me more than anything else, which I think is really sweet. And they like bond over how they write and everything. It's just really sweet. I liked how, they propelled the relationship a little further than we got in the original first Mm. season. Well, I think that this brings it back to the fact that these are just two young kids, right? And at the base of it, 
they have been thrown into circumstances that they have no control over. Right. And so when they can actually remove all of that, all of the pressure from the outside forces, they're just two kids who can talk to each other who are both interested in bending and journals and things like that. And being the best selves, right? Yeah. And I think it's very apparent that they're on a similar path. You know, the circumstances were different, but both the weight of their worlds and literally the world is on one of their shoulders, but of, on their shoulders. And everybody is telling them, having these expectations, you have to be this way. Aang is the avatar. He doesn't want to be. Zuko is heir to be the Fire Lord. He Does he have to be in that way? So I like them connecting this way. And also the sad thing with Aang being like, you know, the, the worst thing about being born 100 years ago is I miss my friends. Yeah. This is the Aang. Like, you know, like these are the moments where it's like, this is Aang. Like he's a kid. I want to see more of this. Yeah. And for him to say, you know, would we be friends back then? I was like, ah, sweet baby, Aang. And he's like, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do want to say one other thing is we, we have a precursor here to how well they're going to work together because of how seamlessly they fought together on that bridge. Yes. I mean, it was like they didn't even have to talk to each other. They just knew what the other one was doing. They've never been in the same area for more than like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And they were like, I got you. Yeah. We can, we can work well together. Be friends. There's something about, I, I think, destiny yeah. here and then finally coming together. Not fully yet, but eventually they will. Yeah. And when Aang chips away at him a little too much and talks about compassion and everything, we yeah. get that kind of echoing line that Zuko repeats to Aang and tells him compassion is a weakness. Right. And his father told him that exact same thing. So you can tell that that scar goes real deep. Mm. And that's how he thinks. And it's not until he gets past that. They can be the Zuko that we love. Yes, because our dear Fire Lord Ozai is just mentally and physically scarring his children. <laughs> what a guy. Consistently. Wow. <laughs> the leader of the Fire Nation bowed to him. Oh my God. All right. So let's go on to these next two. Okay. Uh, 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 the finale. Mm -hmm. um, some interesting stuff here, right? By the end of this, it was apparent and the show addressed it. That Aang did not learn any water bending or any other bending, really. Um, I think it was an interesting choice, you know, because who, I mean, Katara is going to teach him, right? Mm -hmm. She sh should have been this whole time. He helped her out. I think it's a, an interesting choice to put him back that much. I think I had mentioned this in the first part of our review. Um, and I was hoping that he would learn something. He doesn't yet. Mm. So I'm curious if. There is a second season. Is he going to learn that off screen? You know, there, there has to be almost like a time jump. A jump. Right? Yeah. Because these kids are already older. So it would make sense, I guess, for this part. Otherwise, that's a lot of heavy lifting that the season, then the next season is going to have to do. Because they included stuff in this season from the second one, which almost tells me like we might not have room for this. Mm. Or maybe it was the best place to put it for the story. But like there's a lot of story in the second season and especially in the third. So I'm curious how they're going to juggle that, right? Because at this point he still has to learn three other bending styles before he can master the avatar state, let alone face Ozai. Yeah. <gasps> That's another difference here is that I feel like he has sort of learned on his own how to go into the avatar state where it was really something that would randomly happen if he was pushed too far. Whereas, as we saw in Spirited Away, if he meditates long enough, he can separate himself from his body. Yeah, I feel like him him meditating, it seems like it would come easier to him mm -hmm. because he's an airbender, right? They're more in tune with like enlightenment and balance and stuff like that. But I am curious to see going forward, like how much, because I know in the, the second season, it's all about trying to see like how he can master this and do yeah. all this stuff. So I'm curious to see how much, because we get, um, Kuruk tells him when he meets him, he's like, you have to master all four elements to be able to do the, the avatar state. And he's also like, oh, by the way, I can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. My soul is like too damaged. I was like in this beer world too much. <laughs> Don't hang around here. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually just thinking about what I just said. So the avatar state is probably different than going into the spirit world. I would say so. Right. So him meditating on the rock is just going through the veil into the spirit world. Yeah. Or commuting. Whereas, with yeah. Whereas the avatar state is him 
sort of becoming the avatar and being almighty and powerful. Right. He's like getting all the abilities. The glow, I think they say, is all his past lives Mm. helping him. Um, So yeah, they're different, but I think Aang has always kind of been better at the spirit world communing stuff yeah. um, than some of the other ones. He's a wise child. Korra. (laughs) So She had too much going on. The gang finally gets to the north. Beautiful. Again, I think that this series did not hold back in the visuals and making it seem grand in this big world. The North looks fantastic. Looks, if not better, than how they depicted it in the animated series, right? And I was thinking about all the costuming because they had a lot of people in in the North. And so, I mean, it was beautiful. It was beautifully done. Yeah. And even when, you know, Korra thinks that she's going to be trained in fighting, but she's really goes to be trained in healing, even the way Katara. those... Oh, what did I say? Korra. Korra. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when Katara does that, I'm not good with the names. I apologize. Right now, I'm usually much better. You are. Uh, um, but when she goes into like the healing area and those sort of wooden bodies that they have to make the water and energy flow through. Like it was all very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They, they did a good job with attention to detail. I think that some of the costumes, it's like, I can see that fabric being at Joanne's, but like it was, (laughs) (laughs) it was put together really well. Right. Mm. That's like not a knock on anything. Roasted. (laughs) Okay. When they get to the North, we finally meet, uh, Paku and chief Arnook. Hmm. Great characters, Paku, the misogynistic, sexist jerk that doesn't want Katara to fight. (laughs) I felt like he was a little less jerky. But I liked that it carried through from this episode to the last one, Mm. and then it finally happened. Yeah, you know, in 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 the animated series, he was like a jerk. In this one, he's just like, oh, sorry, girl, we just don't do that here. (laughs) No, bye, girl. (laughs) And he also doesn't tell her like right off the bat. He's like, yeah, just go find this person. You can start your training. And then she finds out the sexism. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, cool. Healing. Yeah. Awesome. But I like these moments that Katara gets because these are the things that make us love Katara. And she's like, um, what do you mean you're not allowed to? Like, you you can fight. You should heal, but you should be able to fight. Like, this is dumb. This is stu- <laughs> stupid. And even if you think about it, she watched her mother give up her life so that she could go on and bend, mm-hmm. you know, and and bend it bend water to its full potential <laughs> bend it like Beckham <laughs> and she's gonna be with David Beckham and bend it uh but do you know what I mean like not just to be what she deems as a quiet healer she wants more than that and because there's more at stake for her there right no I agree I I liked uh Master Poophead as they call them in the OG series their fight between Katara and Master Poophead it's good it, it was good it was I, good I, you know, I'm not trying to nitpick. I want to know from our lovely listeners slash viewers, did you feel like out of all of the bending, water bending felt a little slower? Mm. You know, like I feel like and if I just put these two fights, right, the Paku and Katara and Kataro and Zuko, that fight felt different than this fight. Mm. Like it just seems like. You know, when in the Boomy episode, I was going to bring that up when she makes the ice for Sokka to slide Slide. on. It's like they almost don't go fast enough. Yeah. No, it's like just like 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 pull the lines. Yeah. Like he could the (laughs) the speed he went across that ice. He could have walked that Boomy had time to stare at him and wave. Yes. (laughs) So I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was great. And it, it hit all the notes from the original series. You know, we got Katara doing the amazing, ice discs. the ice discs, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was good. It did what it needed to do. It was, it's one of those moments where like, oh, I can't wait for this. Yeah. They have to include this. If they don't include that, what's the point? What did you think of them taking out the connection to Grand Grand that he had? I think it's fine. You mm-hmm. know, I, I think if we had more episodes to play with, it would be better to add that in here because, you know, some of these episodes are just so stuffed with things that are happening that I think adding that extra layer is a little odd. Mm-hmm. But knowing kind of what we know later on with the White Lotus leaders and everything, I mean, it's going to be cool to see Paku again. But like, is that connection going to be there aside from 
oh, you respect me as a master mm-hmm. instead of like somehow being tied to my grandmother in yeah. a way. I mean, she did change centuries of tradition. <laughs> so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> there is, there is that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> she did a pretty good job. Uh, one of the things that I really liked that they changed in this was Han. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's like a bittersweet actually for me. So in the original, Han was a jerk and he was betrothed to Yue and he very much is like, territorial with Sokka in this one he's so sweet he's amazing he did a fantastic job and they kill him (laughs) (laughs) they kill him like it's so insane to me I mean does he come back in the animated series no but I just (laughs) thought it was funny that they changed him they made him nice and then they killed him yeah I'm like you know, I still probably would have been sad if he died and he was a jerk. They you wanted know? to break your heart a little more. But I, I liked the change of the arranged marriage mm. because it's after the fact. And UA was like, I became a priestess. So like, I just wasn't feeling it. And he respects her decision. Sure. Great. Yeah. Love it. So we enjoy how the men of the water <laughs> tribe, they do respect women Some. in the live action. Some. Yeah. But they're still a little stuck in tradition. <laughs> Paku. What did you think of our girl UA? besides the hair you know okay (laughs) there's something to be said of hairstyles that are in animes Mm. or cartoons where they just don't translate well um the wig was awful not great i really didn't like the wig amber midhunter is fantastic despite the wig i like forgot about it after the initial shock she was awesome yeah she um, was really really good she's amazing if you've seen prey fantastic in that go watch that um she really stood out in this which i think she should have Mm -hmm. um, because she plays such a big part in this i liked her a lot i think wig aside fantastic the chemistry between Sokka and her i mean when they're making that cloudberry ice cream you know when they're at the the oasis in the end it was good i felt um the charm was there yeah suki and Sokka and ua and Sokka great yeah and i think that her being so likable made it even more believable that he would you know sort of fall in love with her that quickly Mm -hmm. because i mean they were there for a couple of days maybe yeah i don't know yeah um what did you think about the addition of kuruk here i think that it achieved a goal of him meeting the four other elemental you know avatars before him i don't think it necessarily except for young chen how dare. Well, right, but he's representing. Air, I know. I you know. know. <laughs> she'll come. I'm sure she'll come in. Hopefully. I love her. <laughs> um, I think that it achieved that goal. I don't think he necessarily did much, like we said. He was unhelpful. Yeah. He kind of just like made Aang question everything he believed in as far as his friends helping him through everything for like 30 minutes. I, you know, <laughs> I, I think the interesting thing about this is as. You know, the the series very much questions like predetermined fate and destiny and expectations. And, you know, Aang does do that. Like he does go on his own and find his own way. And I do think it's interesting that a lot of these um, avatars, I think he hasn't understood that like they lived full lives and they lost people that they loved. So, of course, they're going to be a little bitter with that. Um, But I think one of the good things about Aang is that by the end of this, he does understand I can choose the people that I want to have around Mm. because it's what I'm choosing to do. Maybe it didn't work out for you, but it could work out for me. And I think it's interesting to have, you know, Kyoshi saying you have to be a merciless warrior, Roku being like, you probably shouldn't have people around, but like you also don't have to be like super scary all the time. Mm -hmm. And then Kuruk just being like kind of just don't have anybody around you. This is hard. Master the four elements. This is what you have to do. But also like I got stuck in the spirit world. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't great. As don't an hang out here. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things that I think that sort of everyone forgets is that the avatars are just human, right. right? They, they have this ability to create balance and master the four elements, but at the end they are humans who love and who get hurt. And so I think that's what this is showing us partly is how what they went through as the avatar 
who avatars who are also human, how it affected them right. and who they became because of that. And that's one of the richest parts about this story, right? In this universe is that not only do they have to figure out who they are and the type of avatar they're going to be for the world, but they also have their past lives, decisions, communing with them, seeing what happened with them, but also you could decide to fall into that same thing or learn from the wisdom that they're giving you, you know, forget the past and move forward. As they say, the the avatars get no peace. They like are (laughs) dealing with war when they're in this world. They're dealing with, you know, thousands of their past selves yelling at them constantly. This kid's 12. Everyone back off. The only thing I think in this episode that happens with like fire nation people is that, Zhao tries to kill Zuko mm. with blasting jelly. Um, he sets up that plan, which I like. And this is really the episode where I was like, I'm glad that I was like starting to like Zhao because he's ridiculous. Like he's like, I'm going to plant the seeds of like, they know. And then, you know, Lieutenant G is going to go to him and tell him, ha ha. It's just, it's funny. He, he just feels very much like a mini boss. Yeah. Before like the big stuff. Yeah. You know? And when Iroh like, you know, is playing that he doesn't know that it was Zhao that did it. Zhao's like, banging on the table he's like who could do this to our prince our it's, enemies you know it's so good one of our listeners ilsa i i have something um from her email that she sent to part two of her email too look at this oh right um but she did remind me that the actor when he went to go audition for this he thought it was blue people avatar james cameron and not this avatar That's too much and he's like where are the blue people <laughs> It's so good. They're like the waterbenders? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's so good. One other little nugget from this episode that I want to mention is that Sokka says A-S-S. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Bam. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Actually, both of these episodes, um, funny enough, we did Percy Jackson and this, Jet Wilkinson. Yes. Directed both of these two episodes, and they directed three episodes from Percy Jackson. Water, action, kids. They got it on lock. These are two of the strongest episodes. They're like, give me your water-based properties and I'll blow your mind. Watch this. Yeah. We were like, nailed it. (laughs) Nailed it. All right. So on to the finale for book one, season one, Legends. Um, Lots happen here. I want to say this show almost lost us. 13 minutes in. 13 minutes in. To the finale. There is one rule about this show. (laughs) And it is that nothing, and I mean nothing, (laughs) happens to those beautiful little angels. Oh my God. Appa and Momo. You know, I understand it's very expensive to render these characters, right? They're hardly in this season. And for them to think that I needed to care about them more by smashing Momo. With a, a boulder rubble, rubble and also having the captions like shrieking when it happens. Not to mention <sighs> he saved someone's life and then got smushed. And he, they, Saga pulls up his lifeless body. Lifeless. And he's, she's like, is he barely? I'm like, he looks like gone. Girl, no. <laughs> they didn't, they put no life in that CGI. When, <laughs> when it happened. We were watching this late at night and I literally, when I looked at Derek and Derek just kept saying, they killed Momo. They- <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, they could have lost us. Like if that actually happened, which I feel like 30 seconds after that, we're like, okay, they're not going to kill Momo. But that was concerning. When just three episodes before that little angel was handing Katara an acorn, trying to remind her that they can bring life back to this dead place. And then they bring him to a dead place. Yeah. No. Not great. (gasps) And I was so relieved when they first got to the Northern Water Tribe because they're like, we're going to put Appa in a very safe place and he's going to eat lots of seaweed. I was like, yay. And they were like, and then you know what we're going to do? We're going to kill Momo. Well, why wasn't he um, with Appa? Good question. <laughs> is what I want to know. Um, and meanwhile, Appa's just like sitting there like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> All right. As far as finales go, epic. Yeah. Grand, beautiful, fantastic. Uh, very much enjoyed it. Zhao's whole plan is to 
kind of bypass the whole attack and kill the moon spirit. Of course, I rose with him and he's like, uh, no. I loved how they just took it from what y- y- there's no point in changing any of that, right? It's like, do that story. It's mm-hmm. good. It shows so much of what the series is about. And if you mess with things you shouldn't be messing with, especially the balance of the world, shit's going to get ugly. Yeah. By, by Zhao killing the moon spirit, it, it gives Sokka more depth and a driving force for the rest of the series. It gives Aang more depth and driving force for the rest of the series. And so without that, we would have lost so much. And they really did follow the beats of that final episode here as far as how things look. And it was, it was really well done. Yeah. I thought it was um, epic Mm -hmm. and that's, I feel like that's an easy word to say, but it was great. These um, last two episodes specifically, I was like, I'm seeing some really good stuff here. Like there's great stuff Mm. that I feel like may have been missing from some of the earlier episodes. Like it not being so overstuffed, being able to sit with some of this and getting to some core things with the series. Um, I'm looking at like the Omashu episodes stuffed to the gills. Um, So I'm, I very much welcome a second season. I'll watch it. I'm here for it. I, think that the effect when he kills the moon spirit of it turning red Mm. and then they went to the gray when it was like completely gone it's so cool i thought it just looked amazing i loved how the benders were defending the northern water tribe i liked how the firebenders were able to look like a threat as well they make some really cool action sequences in here i love that like almost one shot of the guy that was on one side of the wall and it follows him Mm -hmm. To his ultimate demise, but Mm -hmm. like very cool. Cool. They put a lot of the budget into this final episode. Yeah, this giant battle. And I also think that we get a lot of great Katara stuff in this episode, right? So she kind of becomes a leader in the battle. Um, I know you have feelings. I, (laughs) I think it's fine. I mean, I think she should be. I think she still has stuff to learn, but they all do, right? I, so... Master Poop Head at the beginning of it is like, no. And he was like, fine. He sends the Han and, or no, the, the new water benders that were training with him to her. And it was like, you know, he told us to report to you. She's like, he told you to report to me. Cool. If you see any fireballs, like the millions that are coming at us now, let me know. Two seconds later, she leaves. And at the end, when they come back, he's dead. We did. You know, rude. Yeah, it was rude. And I had a thought <laughs> about the fireballs. What? I'm Why like, did she leave him? She had to go fight Zuko. I know, but <laughs> also, what would she have done? There's a fireball. She would I don't have just know. Been like, I just thought it was really silly. Um, yeah. But, you know, RIP Han and that new other water guy. Water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did the eye closing yeah. thing. But to Zuko and Katara, yeah. Yes, and so that fight was pretty great, right? And we get to see her kind of standing in her own and saying, well, I'm, I'm the master. Right. And she hits him with the ice discs. She freezes him. It's, she it's does all her stellar. new tricks. Yeah. It's fantastic. Loved it. I liked their interaction as well because I think Zuko is starting to understand, like, I need to work on myself as well. Like, I'm having a hard time with this person that could barely splash me mm-hmm. with water. Um, So it was a humbling moment for him, but I think Katara really showed her own. Yeah. Zuko, by the end of this, is a mess. Yeah, but I think he got to a point out of... So if I'm going to rank these, the kids, right, um, Zuko included, I would say Sokka is actually the top of my list. I think he did a fantastic job, the actor. I think he has great story arcs. Very compelling love stories, but also really beautifully done and handled with care. He grew a lot. And this, he got to see that when he helped Sai and uh, Omashu, that that decision is now affecting now. Right. Um, so it really propels his character into a certain, to a certain extent that we weren't at in the first season of the animated series. Yeah. So they're doing that really well. 
Yeah, I agree. Sokka is at the top for me as well. But as far as Zuko is concerned, you know, after this this battle with Katara, where it kind of ends because a fireball crashes into the building that they're in, he learns from Zhao that his sister has been working against him the entire time Mm -hmm. and that everything that he thought that he was doing or fighting against Zhao was just being supported by his family. And so he's completely, it feels like broken. When, you know, right to his face too, it's you looking for the avatar, like all that was a sham. Like, Mm -hmm. do you think he thought you were going to come back? And when you think about that, because when we start the series, the avatar exists. But he had been looking for the Avatar, and they thought he wasn't going to find him. So he actually banished him with the expectation he'd of never him come back. gone forever. And for Zuko to be hit with that realization. Like a fireball. Man, that's real tough on my guy, yeah. Zuko. And then you know what? Iroh burns Zhao to a crisp. I'm really glad. So there was one line that we didn't get that I really liked in the original. And it's when Zuko and Katara are fighting. Mm-hmm. and the whole point in the battle, it's really cool because there's like a standoff and he was like, you rise with the moon and I rise with the sun. I love that line because, you know, they don't attack when the moon is up, whatever. Um, but in this one, we got the really cool thing of like, whatever you do to that spirit, I'm going to unleash on you tenfold. Uh, it's such an iconic Iroh line for me. And I loved it because of his love and understanding of the spirit world. I just liked that they interpreted that. here. Mm-hmm. It's very Yeah, cool. I wish Iroh did a little more. Yeah, he could have done a little more. <laughs> Just a little bit more. The dude was able to like kill the spirit with the avatar and Iroh yeah. right next to him. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, guys, come on, move a little faster. Yeah. Even, you know what? The spirit, the spirit could have flopped back into the water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll talk about Koizilla, is what I'm calling it. The avatar and ocean spirit merging together to create this. Quayzilla, if you will. And in the email that we got from Ilsa, one of the points that I did want to bring up because I actually, it made me go, huh, well, that's interesting. I forgot about that. So one of the things that they bring up in the email, um, I don't want to read it word for word, but they Mm -hmm. were talking about how was it necessary to have the spirit. So in the animated series, it very much seemed like that was like an avatar state thing Mm -hmm. Aang was doing. But in the adaptation, it seemed like it was more the spirit taking over and using Aang, which they showed. But then the added thing of like, it's not Aang, it's the spirit. And he's just going to wander looking for the partner. So he's like Dunzo. He like sacrificed himself. And so in this email, they're kind of like, was that a necessary change? Like if it was the other way around, would the outcome still be the same? Like, did the stakes need to be that high? Like, what mm-hmm. do you think about that? You know, I, I think that the, the feeling of the ocean spirit being lost without its partner very much mirrored Aang feeling lost in this battle because he, after talking to Kurok, he felt like he couldn't be with his friends right. and he would have to be alone. So I feel like like, go away, Katara. Yeah. And so I feel like he kind of they were in the same trajectory of being alone and by themselves. And so their sadness and wrath kind of melds together. So I don't know if it needed to be that high, but I see maybe why they did it. Yeah. It's like they they kind of added more stakes where there was like already stakes happening. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting. I think I don't mind it necessarily. Um because it might give more weight to Aang's decision to like let go. He's like, I couldn't save my world, but maybe I could save this one. So it's very much like that hero moment. Mm. Um, I could go either way with it, right? It's like, I think both decisions are fine because the outcome was the same. The moon right. came back and the spirit was like, okay, fine. And we had Katara talking to Aang and being like, come back. Like, don't be an idiot. You're yeah. Done. Like, you don't, we still need you. You have more to do. The moon's back. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, actually, in this, when UA sacrifices herself, it gave me chills. It was really good. Amber Minhunter. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Like she sold it. She's one of the, the, this kind of supporting cast in here that I was like, knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I th- I, I, actually, I think it's Mid Thunder. Did I say Hunter? Yeah. Okay. Mid Thunder. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, but I agree. I thought for these two episodes that she was in, she was such a powerhouse. 
We cared for her. I was totally charmed by her. And ultimately knowing what her fate was going to be was heartbreaking. And seeing her really, it, it was a balance of bravery and fear mm-hmm. of knowing that she was giving up her life to save the world. Yeah, you know, it was also kind of sad, though, that we didn't get um, to see her spirit form. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to see that. You know, we saw her in like fishy form and the koi pond, but like, yeah. I wanted to see her being like, thank you, Sokka, for, you know, blah, 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 blah. Sokka got another kiss. He did get another kiss. He got two smooches. Two smooches. Oh my God. So, kind of rounding up the loose threads for the season, back to the Azula thing of why I asked you, like, was it okay? Well, blah, blah, blah. I think they could have not included her mm-hmm. until the scene that we see with her at the end. Right. So, at a team avatar, everything's done. Aang is confronted with the devastation and everything like that. And Master Paku is like, we'll rebuild. Here's some water and some scrolls and like everything's fine. <laughs> um, and they're like, bye, have fun rebuilding everything. Um, we're going to go this way. Yeah. And, and Sokka's like, we're going to go to Omashu so you right. can learn how to earthbend. Right. And I would have loved it for this to be the entrance of Azula. Right. Right. We see Omashu devastated. We see Bumi chained up and Azula's like, what's next? That would have been a baller thing. Mm-hmm. I did love seeing her do lightning. I did love seeing her kick ass, but that would have been a really cool thing yeah. because it would have left some moments for our main team to kind of flesh out a little more. And I, it was funny because when they, you know, show Boomy. They show this masked soldier walking towards him. Right. We knew who it was, right? Whereas if we didn't know that Azula was in the series and then she took the mask off and it was Azula, it would have been very much like the ending of the animated series when we were like, wait a minute. Oh man, it's Azula. Right. And I thought it was interesting too, because in the, I believe it's the first episode of the second season where Azula confronts Zuko and he's like, you can come back home and everything. And it's really to like capture him Mm -hmm. because like, He's not. So they kind of fast forward that a little bit. It's like, no, we already know that you're a traitor and like you're everything you're doing is a sham where he learns that in the second season. He already knows that now. So they kind of sped that up a little bit. Mm. Um, And then we finally get like the ticking clock for the entire series. We see that Ozai gets told by the sage from the fire temple about Sozin's comet. And that's going to be That's like putting rubber to pavement. This is going to be the thing. Yeah. He has to learn all the elements, get the avatar state down before Sozin's Comet, because then the Fire Lord is going to act. That's right. So not good. The hourglass has been flipped over (laughs) and the sand is running through it. (laughs) And Aang can either be buried in it or burst through it. Oh my God. There's so much. So going to whatever favorite, whatever. I'm not going to call it nibbies, but <laughs> I just did. Do you have, like, let's talk about the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Zuko, Sokka, Katara, Aang. Not if you could rank them, but what was your favorites? I guess that is ranking, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I will say that one of, in, in our Before You Watch episode, I said one of the things that I want so badly is to have the humor from Sokka. Mm. And although this was sort of a, more serious interpretation of the animated um, show, I think that they achieved a level of Sokka being funny. With what they were given. Yes, exactly. And so Sokka really was my standout for this. Interesting, You know, and Sokka is sort of that every man, right? I I think I mentioned this as well, is that he is us. He can't bend. We're like him. So we're seeing it from his perspective. And I just thought that he did a really solid job of portraying this character. Yeah. I was a little worried, you know, going into this, knowing that they took away his like um, misogynistic side because it is a arc that he goes through to then become who he is. I think he was humbled enough in this to where we get that, right? Because Mm -hmm. one of the times he really gets humbled is with Suki. And I feel like they handled it well. And he is on his way to become that great leader, that great warrior, that great strategist and yes. engineer. Right. Um, if I had to like put them in like my favorites as far as this season or like who I was pleasantly surprised with, it would be Sokka, Zuko, Katara, Aang. Like Katara and Aang, I feel like are the same for me. It's mm-hmm. like, they were fine. I feel like there was more 
I need more from them, um, especially Aang. Yeah. I, I think I need a little more like stuff happening with him. Yeah. I, and I, I'm really sticking to what I said in our last episode of the fact that Aang represents joy and hope. And I felt like he was being beat down by everyone around him. They all hate him. Yeah, he never really got a chance to get to that level. And then he beat himself down on top of it. Yeah. You know, towards in these last four episodes, a, a common theme for him was, this is all my fault because I went away for 100 years. This is why this happened. All these people keep dying. So it's a very, you know, sad journey for him through this first season. And that stuff does happen. But I feel like since we don't get the stuff of him learning more than yeah. that or feeling sad for himself, it does make it a little heavy. Yeah. I feel that. like we don't get this Ang until we have like fire nation Ang who has hair, <laughs> you know, when he's like really going through it, when Azula like wrecks his back and all that right, stuff, like right. that's when we get really sad Ang who needs to work through a bunch of stuff and angsty Ang. Yeah. Yeah. So they definitely, I mean, they sped this up a lot. It's interesting that they sped that part up, but he hasn't learned any other types of bending yet. Do you have um, a favorite moment from this season? Like if you were to pick like, or even just like story arc or fight or whatever, do you have like a favorite? I think my favorite, oof, I'm, I'm torn between two. I'm torn between uh, the Kyoshi Warriors fighting in episode two or uh, Aang and Zuko on the bridge. Mm. That's really good. I mean, that did have the latter thing, which was pretty cool. It was really cool. I mean, I think Kiyoshi's was probably my favorite and I really liked masks. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the, the end was super epic and stuff. And like, that's the action stuff that we expect. But like, there was something really special about the Warriors episode, especially with Sokka and Suki and just seeing them. Also, Avatar Kiyoshi, always yeah. a win. And I think we also know how important the Kiyoshi Warriors are. And getting Suki and seeing Suki being portrayed so well, it was really exciting. The only letdown for that is that we didn't get to see Sokka in the entire Kyoshi yes. Warriors makeup and all. How dare. With his little point deal. How dare you take that from us? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> but let us know who was the standout character for you, standout scene. Bending was amazing. I am game for another season. I hope it gets one. You know, yeah. it, there was like 20... 1.2 million viewers in the first or views in the first four days. Um, so numbers are looking pretty good yeah. for it, but does the cost outweigh the viewership? I will see. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know if this affects it in any way, but I felt like there was a bit of a backlash to this with people kind of dumping on it a lot online. So I don't know if that affects it at all, but the fact that so many people watch it, I hope that, um, it's just that those few sour voices are just rising. Yeah. And what I always say, what we always say really is that, you know, watch the thing for yourself and kind of see how you feel because yeah, maybe some of that is actually valid, but sometimes mm -hmm. there's echo chambers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, people will say things cause it's popular to say it, but mm -hmm. you know, just find it out for yourself. One thing, last thing before we go is in this email. So I did want to address this because we did say this couple months ago, we were going to do the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes episode. So Ilsa had also asked about that. Like, are you still going to do this? Maybe. We didn't do it because there was a lot of like family stuff and everything happening. We had said that prior to it happening. Um, and then we kind of just fell into the Percy Jackson stuff. Um, so we didn't get to it, but we did watch it. We did watch it. We have lots of thoughts. You know, maybe we'll do it on Patreon or something like that. Ah, Maybe there'll be a draft episode and it will appear. Um, but we don't at this moment have any plans to do an episode on it. But we did watch it and we did enjoy it. Life happens, people. <laughs> thank you for giving us grace. <laughs> yes. But also, like, thank you for listening. Yeah, I know. <laughs> whenever you said that, I was just like, <gasps> we, we did didn't say. do it. <laughs> <laughs> In 2023, we said the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So. That's it. We finished. We made it. We officially did all our bites, all our nipples of Avatar, Netflix. You know, I don't feel like this is going to be the end for Avatar for us in one way or another. There's more. Good job, gang. Yeah. We did it. Oh, and Momo, they brought Momo back to life. <laughs> I like how we were so upset and then just like, I know. We just got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they put him in the water and then she healed him. <laughs> oh. All right. So till next time. Bye. Bye.